Hello and welcome back to the Maddie Talk. Today we are talking about the seated scribe, also known as the squatting scribe. Some elements and principles that can be related to this piece are form because it is a 3D sculpture and the details that make the third dimensional features pop use form with value. Line is used with balance with the outline around the scribe's eyes that make the face look very symmetrical. Line is also in other places like his hairline along with his facial features. Color is used with his crystal eyes, the pigment of his skin, and the shade of black used in his hair. Value is used on the shading of his nose, ears, and lips. There is an emphasis on the scribe's eyes and could be said that there is an emphasis used with color. The sculpture was originally found in Saqqara, Egypt and was moved to the Louvre Museum in Paris, France. The seated scribe was found on an ancient necropolis, meaning a large-scale cemetery. Historians believe the seated scribe was used to commemorate a knowledgeable scribe in the area of Saqqara when he passed away. These types of statues were thought to help ease the deceased person into an afterlife when buried with the person. The scribe sculpture was thought to be made in 2600 BC during the Old Kingdom Age in Egypt, making it over a thousand years old. The size of the artwork is 21 inches by 17 inches by 14 inches, which is about the size of a small toddler. This makes it relatively small when compared to how large the subject probably was. The artist of this piece is unknown, but was most likely Egyptian themselves. The form is also symmetrical. He is made out of limestone, crystal rock, magnesite, and copper. Limestone is located in the hills and cliffs bordering the Nile River Valley. Some can be mined along the Nile's Delta Mediterranean coast, Alexandria. Magnesite is most commonly found in Australia, but can also be found in the Eastern Desert, Red Sea, and in Egypt. The limestone the piece is made out of was painted with very vibrant colors. The rock crystals found in the striking eyes are what captures the most attention from spectators. The eyes being so vibrant caused the onlooker to get a feeling of alertness and intelligence, which connects to how knowledgeable the scribes were. Papyrus was a plant that could be flattened and weaved in order to form what we would call paper. Papyrus plants grew in the wilds of the Egyptian Delta and in the Nile River Valley. Some say that the scribe used to hold a brush in his right hand, but it broke off. The posture of the seated scribe is important to note as it shows the subject sitting relaxed but alert. When these types of sculptures were built, they were usually depicting pharaohs to show their powerful position in the community. When a pharaoh was sculpted, the features would be extravagant and idealized. The muscles would be enlarged and the posture would be upright and authoritative. Alternatively, the seated scribe is seen seated, crisscrossed, with an unidealistic physique. Scribes in Egypt were usually men. Scribes went to school for four to five extra years than the average Egyptian man would. They would learn to read and write. A piece to compare the seated scribe to is King Makir and Queen. The king and queen are both standing in a power stance while the scribe is sitting. The seated scribe piece utilizes color while King Makira and Queen are carved out of a slate. Although both pieces look like they have full bodies, the back of King and Queen are fully carved out, maybe for structure stability, but this makes the seated scribe more of a high relief carving than the King and Queen are. The King and Queen piece depicts a set of people that are known to have existed in Egypt. The seated scribe, however, draws some confusion as to if the subject was a real scribe or if it was just a generalization of all scribes that lived during that time. It is more likely that this was a real person because of its burial at a necropolis, but this is not known. Another unknown detail of the scribe is what the seated scribe is sitting on. It is a stone material, thought to be limestone, that will usually contain the subject's name and information about the artist. For unknown reason, the bottom portion of the slab the scribe is sitting on has been cut off. Another detail to add is the idea that the artist of the piece is not made to be the focal point of the art. When you look at artists like Jackson Pollock, you appreciate the name attached to the artwork more than the concept of the art itself. The art isn't that interesting to look at, but you basically only want to look at it because it is a famous Pollock piece. In contrast, when looking at the seated scribe, the concept of the art is more important than who made it. The content of the scribe and its functional use as a funerary piece is really the most important part of the work. Sculpting scribes wasn't an uncommon thing in ancient Egypt. There are many other scribe sculptures. Most sculptures are found to have long hair, although the seated scribe has short hair, 
Most scribes' sculptures are found to have the same clothing and are all holding papyrus paper. Many variations of the seated scribe sculptures can be found all over Egypt with many of the same features. Most are sitting in a relaxed position and are seen at work ready to scribe. These individuals were some of the most praised people in the community, so it makes sense that they were sculpted so much. Thank you for coming to Maddie Talk. See you next week for an analyzation of the Colosseum. Peace out, homies.